Hello world and welcome to the S&P 500 and NASDAQ for the 10th of November. So on the weekly chart here, um, as you know, we're looking at uh, this market has uh, expanded flat for uh, uh, wave four here as an A and a B and a C, and we're looking for five waves to the upside. So in these five waves to the upside, we're looking at this top here as wave three and ABC for wave four here, and we're looking for five waves to the upside. So I can just draw those in here for us. We're looking at wave one here, pull back for wave two, and then wave three, four, and five <clears throat> up into somewhere in between 4,100, 200, and 300. Probably, um, well, we'll see. We'll just see. We'll be able to um, get some Fibonacci relationships as we go. Now, the other point here, too, that I just want to repeat is that <clears throat> this particular top here, we can look at it as wave one, and it probably is wave one, and we'll pull back for wave two. But there also is the possibility that this wave four here can terminate here as wave five within these within this five wave structure. So um, it is a point for long term holders to be extremely careful, um, and probably wouldn't be such a bad idea to if you're trading stock <clears throat> portfolios, four hundred ones and whatever, is to lock. Um, is to is hedge those uh, positions that you have there until we can figure out um, what's what. But even so, um, hedging is not such a bad idea because um, you know you'll be able to accommodate uh, lock this up here. Right. Let's move into the daily chart and have a look at this five wave structure here. Just squash it in here. So from this. Uh, Wave four here, we're looking at wave one and two here, and wave three here, an A and a B and a C here for wave four. And then we're looking up here for wave one, back for wave two, three, four, and five uh, in this uh, sequence. And there's a couple of reasons. We, we were also considering this to be a triangle, as you know, um, but the last time we spoke uh, yesterday, um, we turned it into this particular pattern here. And we were also sort of edging in that way because if you, if I can just bring across one of the leading stocks here, um, Alphabet, that we've been looking at, um, in this instance, we could look at it a bit differently in terms of an A and a B and a C wave here for wave four. And then we started counting up here, as you know, as, as five waves. And it was quite a nice five waves within all of this. And then we were all looking for a very simple ABC pattern. We worked our way through that. Uh, wave one jumped a little bit high, so I end up missing out on, on that. But um, we put a little buy signal above here. Not that that was doing much good either. Uh, slight profit there. So a little bit behind the eight ball on that one. But um, the main takeaway here was that this particular stock um, was is leading to the upside here. So um, obviously it still has uh, much further to go, but it will pull back. It's hitting 1800. Eight's a profit taking number. It's a minor level in regards to the trading level. So we'll see that profit taking come in on that number. So we always take part profit there. So if you're in here, then this is the number to, um, to, to take at this particular point here. And we can move this over here to a wave four. And I'll just leave that out of the way because we've just been using that as a guide stick, that particular stock, and it's worked out quite nicely for us. But while we're on the daily chart here, I'll just come across. To the NASDAQ as well. <clears throat> With the NASDAQ, we're looking at an A and a B and a C. And in this case, we could count five waves down here better than the S&P. So that was another reason. So it was really the tech stocks that um, pushed us over to that uh, to that particular count. Now, um, with this market here, we can count uh, five waves up here. So we're looking for uh, an A and a B and a C wave back into the 61.8%, which brings us down to a medium level here of 11,500 in regards to the trading level. So I won't focus on this a lot. I will pull apart the S&P um, 500 um, pattern here, but just to let you know where that is at that point. And coming back here, so we're looking from wave four to wave five here, and we'll be looking for wave five to take us up into group one, and that will be minor group one. So group one is just simply 
one, two, and three. If I can close enough. Uh, and 100 here, close enough for the time being. The next level up here, of course, is 5, which is a midpoint, 4,500. I'll adjust those later. Um, but yes, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 moving up through here. Let's go in and take a closer look at this on the intraday. So this is our intraday count here. Moved a tad high yesterday when we put the video out. We're looking for it to um, navigate across the 3600. It went a little bit higher into the lower end of group two. So for the trading levels, 65, 72, and 80 is all part of group two here. All right. So it couldn't find support in group two. If it had latched on to that particular number, the 3650, then the lower end of group two, if it, could, if it could latch itself into there and find support there, then it would have climbed higher through through other important numbers. There's a lot of other numbers in here, price points in here that um, are extremely important as well, um, such as the 3700, of course. Um, but that's just general the general framework of it all there. Um, so it's a minor group two. Um, however, so it pushed a little bit higher than I thought, um, but that's okay. We've got our five waves in this last little structure here. Uh, as far as the crow flies, we're looking for an A and a B and a C. The 61.8 is back at the 3400. Does it have to come all this way down? No, but what we do is we'll track the structure. That's the important thing. So we'll be looking for five waves in the A wave, three in the B, and five in the C wave here. So a zigzag, a five, three, five structure. So that's the best way to handle that. And we'll see. I mean, um, it may just come down to the 3,500 uh, and so on, but we need to see that 5-3-5 five, structure play out. Just on the daily uh, hourly chart here, that's not going to help us. Um, I'll go to the tick chart after this, but I just want to have a look at another count that we'd also looked at yesterday as well, and I'll do that on the 15-minute chart. I'll just scroll this up here. I know it's a little bit messy, but um, we will um, unfold it a little bit. So in this case here, in the other charts that we've been looking at, this green wave one is sitting on the top here where that blue wave one is. But uh, uh, I think last week and also yesterday as well, we were looking at uh, wave one up here with wave two here, blue wave two, and then looking further up here for this count so I think it's still worthwhile talking about so from the blue wave two here we counted up as one two three four five or one and two here and then um, we can look at this as the five wave structure here for wave three and um, I thought wave one looked a little bit longer than uh, wave uh, three, but it's not the case. They're pretty much the same. In fact, wave three can be just a tad uh, longer. Um, so this count is still valid. And now in this instance here, we would be looking at um, a much shallower retracement, and that would just bring us down here as an A wave here, a B wave here. That might get a bit more complicated or it may be in place there already. If it drops below this low here, then it's in place already. And then what we can do because it's just good, I mean, we're in a bullish trend, so we don't want to stick our heads in the sand. So if this, if this, this market drops below here, because it could be an A wave, a B wave, and, whoops, a daisy, uh, and a C wave up here, and then come down through here. But what I'm saying, if it comes down and drops below here, below this one here, then you can consider this being the top here. OK, and in that case, then we can turn that into a buy signal. So we'll just put that in green. And then we can be on our merry way again to the upside there. Just get that there. I mean, a more refined um, entry point here would be this is 30. 3600 here. So with the trading levels, uh, we've got subgroup one, which will be one, two, and three, but in this case, it will be 10, 20, and 30. So what we could do is grab that there and put that on 30. Let's 
let's just get that right, shall we? So instead of just buying that top there, you can look for a classic trading levels pattern. So the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, and the ABC pattern, and then go along at that point. That would be the right thing to do. That's refining that uh, in a sense. But either way, it should be okay. So if it drops below here, then that becomes a signal here because this will just be five waves down to here. Into, into, this is all of group two here. So, um, well, 65, 72, and 80. So this is subgroup two above and uh, below the 3600 and uh, group one above that one, two, and three there. So uh, we'll see how that plays out there. And as I mentioned, once we get a nice tested, see, that's not support. We've got the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, and then we'd look for an ABC pattern, and then we would go in like over here. So the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, the ABC pattern, and then we go in like that. Um, so we have to wait for tested support on a price point. So that's only half of the setup and it failed to set up correctly. So um, that's the beauty of the classic trading levels pattern. And you know that uh, by this picture here. So this could be any price point across here. And we have the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, the corrective move. And then we enter over here and we can use these highs here to go long on as well. And the variation on that is this pattern here um, where it doesn't drop below the level. And the final pattern that we get, because there's not much that can really happen at a level. The, if it's going to have a correction at the level, then it's going to be one of these three things. So in this case, it doesn't stop here. It just continues to the upside, but then fades on lower volume and then has its ABC correction and then find support over here and then we could also use these highs to go along on as well and in a lot of cases it could get a little bit more complicated than this but the takeaway here is that because it didn't stop here that means that this level here eventually becomes the real balance point like the center of a triangle pattern and that's the way that you can use it in that regard okay so um, yeah, so this is the alternative count, okay? And that will give us wave three up here, wave four here. Um, that will that wave five will be at the 38 here. And we can push this over here. This, this one here, this wave four will break that trend line. That's what it does. And we expect it to do that. Um, and then that will take us to a lower target to the upside of 4,000 rather than 4,200 or 300. Um, right, so let's just go back to this count here, which in this count we've got wave one sitting at the top here, and we're looking at ABC pattern here. So I want to go to the tick chart now, and the tick chart is 100 ticks, and I also work on 20 ticks and 5 ticks, so I break things down. So in this case here, we could probably go for the week. Yeah, we can Just fit it in. So this is our orange wave four down through here. I won't go into a lot of detail here, but these green blurbs here are one and two and three and four here. And then looking at this as wave five. So I just want to go over this a little bit here. So we've got one and two here, and this is five waves up here. So for wave three, back for wave four, and then we're looking at this here as one and two here and three and four and five, even though it hasn't made a new high above here. OK, um, yeah, the only other way to count this is one and two and then one and two and one and two. Uh, and that would give us more upside. But this one here, this is five waves in here. And we can also look at this as five waves as well as one and two here. And then one, two, three, four, five here for the third wave. So this is a fourth wave. And then you can work that out, the fifth wave in here. This down here would be one and two and three and four and five here. The ABC pattern didn't quite get back to where we wanted to get back to here. But like I said, um, unless this is taken, this there's normally equality in corrections as well. So um, if this was the alternative count as the A wave, the B wave and the C wave, then there'll be some sort of equality between these. But this could certainly come up to this point here again um, anywhere above that you can pretty much go along but otherwise we'll need to call that in here 
um, but it could get a bit more complicated and just go to this point just to make things complicated. Um, and then what we'd be looking for here would be one and two and three and four and five here for the A wave and then an ABC for the B wave here. So an A, So if we came down to the 3500 here, just getting into the guessing game, um, then that would bring us back to this space here for this, which would be about right because that's where the volume has turned out at that particular point. And we'll just be looking for something of this nature here. It should be quite a sharp correction um, as such. And then that's the C wave here. So five waves, three waves and five waves down into this point. So with all that said, um, then if this market finds support, um, if it drops below here, like I mentioned, just to recap, then you can go along on the 30, um, 3630, the top of group one with a little classic trading levels pattern. Um, but otherwise, if it doesn't break this low here and it just goes straight up to here, um, then it could be in a little A, B and C to this point and then drop down into this space here because it hasn't really reached its point here. Um, certainly, if, if you can't figure out what's going on, then the midpoint, the five is the second strongest number in the market. So this 3650 here is also the lower end of minor group two. So minor group two is, is 3650, 3720, there, and the 38 here for that, which really I need to, so it's quite a wide space when you look at it on the tick chart. So I'm certainly just going to darken these two here because they're part of a, part of another sequence there. So it, it is important here. Well, you'll see it, of course it's important because it's already hit here. Um, so it, it makes it so again at this point. So um, yeah, group minor group two, the, this one in here, this is subgroup 2, 65, 72, and 80. And then the next degree higher is minor group 2, which is the six, 3,650, uh, the 72 here, the 3,720, and the 3,8 here. Um, this is really the big number here that we'd be looking at at that point. So, yeah, look, that's it. Uh, sorry to waffle on so much, but um, I think it's good to chuck in a little bit of education even though i whipped through that a little bit quickly as well um i'll leave it at that uh thanks for tuning in much appreciated cheers